A block of mass M acted on by a force of magnitude F directed horizontally to the right, as shown above, slides up an inclined plane that makes an angle theta with the horizontal. The coefficient of sliding friction between the block and the plane is mu. Part A. On the diagram of the block below, draw and label all of the forces that act on the block as it slides up the incline. Well, we have the force applied. We're also going to have the force of gravity, the force of friction, and the normal force. The force of friction is going to point in the direction down the incline because that's the direction opposite of motion, which is up the incline. And the normal force is going to be perpendicular to the incline. And like always, gravity is pointing straight downwards. Part B, develop an expression in terms of m, theta, f, mu, and g for the block's acceleration up the plane. All right, so for this question, we are gonna be determining acceleration, which means this would be a good time to define our coordinate system as being oriented along the incline. So now we consider all of the forces in the x direction as causing motion in the x direction. So let's also take a closer look at the free body diagram so we can draw each of the forces in component form as well. So we also need to write out Newton's second law because that's how we're gonna actually solve for acceleration. So the sum of all forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. And it looks like here we've got three forces acting in the x direction. We've got the force of friction, the force applied, and the force of gravity. And two of those are just components, so we need to write out an expression for each of them. And the force of gravity in the x direction is on the opposite side of the triangle as the theta at the top, so we want to use sine. And for the force applied, fx is on the adjacent side of the triangle relative to theta, so we say that the force applied in the x direction is equal to f cosine theta. And now we have our three forces. We can sum them all up. Let's take up the incline to be positive. So we can subtract our two negative forces, FF and FG sine theta. And something we need to remember for this problem is that, of course, force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. We need to know what the normal force is. Now, if you're used to solving inclined plane problems without applied forces, you might remember that we sometimes just say that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity in the y direction. But in this problem, we have an additional force in the y direction. So we need to sum all of the forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero because our acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero. So off to the side, we can say the sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to zero and we've got three forces in the y direction. Let's say that the only positive one is the normal force. Fy applied and Fgy are both gonna be negative. And if we're solving for Fn, we just need to add those other two to the other side. And Fgy is going to be on the adjacent side of the gravity triangle, so we can say Mg cosine theta. And the force applied in the y direction is on the opposite side of the triangle for f, so that's gonna be f sine theta. Okay, so now we're ready to write out our expression to calculate acceleration. And those are all of our forces. Um, and we can set that equal to mass times acceleration. And we're pretty much done. We just need to divide by m on both sides. And that's gonna be our expression for acceleration. Pretty crazy. All right, part C. Develop an expression for the magnitude of the force F that will allow the block to slide up the plane with constant velocity. Also, what relation theta must theta and mu satisfy in order for this solution to be physically meaningful? All right, so for force, or the velocity needs to be constant, which is a clue telling us that our acceleration needs to equal zero. So if we go back to our of sum of all forces in the x direction equation, we can basically rewrite that, but this time we don't want there to be an acceleration, so instead of setting it equal to ma, if that a is zero, mass times zero is gonna be zero, we can just set the whole equation equal to zero. And let's take uh, the two terms
terms with f in it and put them together and then we can pull the f out of each term and then just divide by cosine theta minus mu sine theta on both sides to get f completely alone. And in this expression, first of all it's a fraction, which means we need to take a close look at our denominator to see when there might be some issues. And that's going to be basically answering the question about the relationship between theta and mu for a physically meaningful equation. So by just looking at the denominator, we're going to need to say that that's going to need to be greater than zero for this to be a meaningful result. We don't need it to be negative, um, but technically it could be, but we're looking for it to be positive, so we can just add the mu sine theta over to the other side, and that gives us the relationship for cosine theta with mu that we're looking for.